Case 12. I, I didn't think this was Dr. Gardner. Okay. So at this hour, again, we see just pink histia sites uh, scattered throughout the dermis, pretty superficial 2D um, on this shave. What I can sort of see as we zoom in is there's sort of almost two distinct colors of cytoplasm. Good. Um, like a, a deeper pink fuchsia color and a paler pink color, sort of two-tone. Um, and there are, uh, like, uh, a few eosinophils scattered throughout there as well. Yep. Um, so this is good for a multicentric reticulohistiocytosis. Yeah, so it depends on the clinical uh, situation. If this is one lesion, we would call it a, a reticulohistiocytoma, a solitary reticulohistiocytoma. If the patient has multiple lesions, particularly like papules on the dorsal hand, then that's multicentric reticulohistiocytosis. And that form of the disease is often associated with uh, severe arthritis that can be like really, really crippling and severe. The solitary form uh, is generally not associated with anything else. I will say this is something that I rarely see. I've only seen a few cases in practice, okay? The, uh, the, there you, you get a nodule, an aggregate of these very large histiocytes that are kind of epithelioid. I would definitely not fault you for doing a, uh, a SOX-10 or S100 stain to make sure these are not melanocytes. They look a little like, almost like spitzoid melanocytes a bit. Uh, they almost look a little like uh, epithelial cells or like epithelioid sarcoma cells a little bit. So I would never fault you for doing some stains to make sure this wasn't something else. Because these cells are big and they look kind of atypical with their large nuclei and their prominent nucleoli. And um, they often have a variety of inflammatory cells mixed with them, including eosinophils. And for that reason, I feel like this to me, reticulohistiocytoma has a lot of overlap with um, juvenile xanthogranuloma uh, to my eye. Usually in juvenile xanthogranuloma, you don't get as big, as plump, as epithelioid histiocytes. And usually you have more foamy cells, more Teuton giant cells, more fibrosis, more inflammation. But I feel like even though these things are probably two separate things biologically, they morphologically have some overlap sometimes. So, so if you're seeing something and thinking, ooh, could this be uh, reticulous cytoma or JXG? If it's on a test, if you see a lot of EOs, although this case has quite a few EOs, but if you see a lot of EOs, a lot of foam cells, Teuton giant cells, uh, and not as many of these big epithelioid looking cells, then vote for JXG. If the opposite of that, then vote for reticulous histiocytoma, okay? I would also point out that look at this. There is imperipolesis all over the place in this case. So uh, just a reminder that imperipolesis, while it is a buzzword for rosei Dorfman, it can be seen in other things, including reticulous dysitoma. I've seen it before in juvenile xanthogranuloma. And occasionally you just see it in, in random inflammatory uh, reactions where you can see some uh, neutrophils or lymphocytes caught up in cytoplasm of histiocytes. So, uh, and I, I love the point you make that I think the, most helpful uh, feature of these histiocytes is the two-toned or two-colored, not to be confused with two-ton, which is the giant cell with the multinucleated ring and the foam around the outside, but these are two-toned, T-O-N-E-D, two-colored histiocyte cytoplasm, that purpley fuchsia kind of color, and then the pale pink usually around the periphery. And I find that a pretty reproducible feature in the, the few cases that I've seen. So I, I like that. And you could ask, well, how do I know this is not Rosei Dorfman? Well, I think the, uh, the, the dense pink and purple color of the cytoplasm, that is very typical reticulous histiocytoma, like we're just talking about, as opposed to Rosei Dorfman, which has very fluffy, light, pale uh, uh, cytoplasm, loose cytoplasm of the histiocytes. Okay? So a really nice example of a rare entity.